Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into a very important topic for those of you managing Kubernetes in production environments. Setting up a high availability Kubernetes cluster using KubeDM. When running it in production, ensuring high availability is crucial to minimize downtime and provide fault tolerance. In this tutorial, we'll walk through everything step by step from preparing your systems and setting up the load balancer to configuring the control planes, deploying Calico for networking and joining worker nodes to the cluster. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully functioning production-ready HA Kubernetes cluster ready to handle your workloads. Here is a table that outlines the environment configuration for Kubernetes high availability cluster. I, I will use Debian 12 operation system. This table provides a clear overview for each component, its description and the requirement needed for setting up a production ready Kubernetes environment. Let me know if any modification are needed. Here as you see architecture of the Kubernetes high availability cluster. It is included several components organizing in a hierarchical structure highlighting the role of control plane and worker nodes as well as a load balancer. On the top layer there are three worker nodes. These nodes are responsible for running application workload and communicating with the control plane through the load balancer. In the middle layer you see single load balancer. The load balancer is responsible for directing traffic to the control plane nodes. On the bottom level there are three control nodes. Each node contains the following components. Metal LB, this is likely used for load balancing within the cluster for services that required external access. The Kubernetes API server that handles all cluster communication. Control manager, the component responsible for managing controllers that regulate the state of cluster. Scheduler, assign pod to nodes based on resource availability or policy. ETCD, the distributed key value story that stores all cluster data. This architecture illustrates a typical Kubernetes a high availability setup where the load balance and managing traffic and multiple control plane nodes, which in turn coordinate and manage the state of the worker nodes. This setup ensures redundancy and fault tolerance, making it suitable for production environment. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a, an update. Drop any question you have in the comment below and I will be sure to get back to you. Let's prepare the system environment including updating packages, managing users and configuring system files. Switches to the root user, update the package index upgrades all installed packages to their latest versions, installs sudo, a tool that allows non-root users to run commands as a super user, adds your user to the sudo group, granting it administrative privileges. To ensure that all nodes in your Kubernetes cluster can communicate correctly, you need to update your its host file on each node. This file maps IP addresses, the two host names, so nodes know how to resolve each other. Open the its host file with your preferred text editor, for example, in my case it's nano, and add entries for each node in your cluster. Ensure that each node in the cluster has the same its host file for consistency. Kubernetes requires that swap be disabled on all nodes. Open the fstop file to make this change 
permanent, find the line that contains the swap partition, comment it out by adding the sharp at the beginning of the line. It remains disabled after a reboot. Now we have add necessary kernel modules in system con CTL configuration. Modprobe loads this module immediately while adding them to k8s conf file ensures that load to add boot. Adding network bridget parameter to kernel and accept it. Check if the modules are loaded properly. Manages system time setting the correct time zone ensures locks and scheduling work properly. Crony is a time synchronization daemon. Let's install it. Starting and enabling to the boot. Check if system clock synchronize it. Installs essential tool for downloading file from the internet. Get downloads necessary components like Critical rank and containered critical parts of the container runtime environments. Extracts critical to user local bin. Extracts container the binaries to user local directory. Downloads and sets up a systemd service file for container D. Installs rank a low-level container runtime to the system path. Create a default configuration file for container D in etc container D directory. Adjust the container D configuration to use system D for C groups. Extracts CNI plugins essential for networking in Kubernetes ports. Reload system D configuration enables container D at boot, starts the service and check its status. Configures Cricktail to communicate with container D through its socket. Install some dependencies to be able to access this repository using HTTPS. Adds the GPGK for the Kubernetes repository. Adds the Kubernetes repository to the systems package list. Now let's install the main Kubernetes components and hold them at their current versions to prevent automatic updates. Make sure to run this command on every node in your cluster, including all masters node and worker, all worker nodes, except load balance. The next step I want to show you how to install load balancer HA proxy. Go ahead. First, we need to make sure the system is up to date. If you don't already have SUDA privileges set up, you may need to install SUDA and add your user to the SUDA group. It's important that all nodes have synchronized time setting, as Kubernetes heavily relies on accurate timekeeping. Troni helps keep time consistent across all nodes. Edit the Crony configuration. After making any necessary changes, start and enable the service. Update the etc host file to ensure all nodes can resolve each other and entries for your master and worker nodes. Save and exit. Now let's install HA proxy. Edit the H8 proxy configuration file to set up load balancing for the Kubernetes API. Here's configuration to distribute traffic among your control plane nodes. Make sure to replace the API address with your actual control plane nodes. After configuring HA proxy, restart the service to any changes. That's it. You now have HA proxy set up as a load balancer for your Kubernetes.
Now on the first master node initialize the Kubernetes control play with command kubedm init. This command set up the Kubernetes control plane on the node. Please save in this setting somewhere in the node. Configure kubectl access copies admin.com file which contains credential for interacting with cluster to your home directory. This enables kubectl commands to access the Kubernetes cluster without specifying credentials each time. Changes the ownership of the file to the current user, ensuring they have appropriate permissions. Deploy the Calico network plugin. This command applies the Calico YAML manifest to the cluster, which sets up networking for port and services. Wait a, a couple of minutes until your Calico ports are up and running, and after that you can add the next master node to the cluster. Copy your a command that you save on your node. And paste to CLI to terminal. For the master to. Add sudo privileges. You have joined the second master node to the cluster. It may take some time. After that, add the third master node to the cluster. Once all the master nodes are in the ready state, proceed to the working nodes and join them to the cluster. This command labels the nodes as worker nodes in the cluster. You see it. You have to wait in until worker node status is ready. Let's install MetalB. MetalB a load balancer implementation for bare metal Kubernetes cluster. Get the latest MetalB release stack. Now I'm checking release stack using echo command. Let's create directory where manifests will be downloaded to. Download MetalB installation manifest now. And now I'm installing MetalB in my Kubernetes cluster by applying the manifest. Wait a couple of minutes until your MetalB ports are up and running. When all ports were running, we're creating a file with configuration for IPs that MetalB uses to assign IPs to services. I copied config and I wanna change my IP address pool that C to my uh, local network. Apply configuration using kubectl command. Now I'm checking if configuration was applied. Configuration have applied now, as you can see. I congratulate you if you reach this step because you have set up a Kubernetes cluster. Now that our cluster is set up, let's test it with a demo deployment. We'll deploy a simple application to verify that everything is working correctly. This will help confirm that our nodes are communicating properly and that our setup is functioning as ex expected, as expected. Follow along as we launch the deployment and check the status of our pods.
if everything goes well, our cluster should be up and running smoothly. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a, an update. Drop any question you have in the comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you.